Millions of gallons of highly flammable crude oil rolls along Hampton Roads railways. It goes past backyards, schools, and businesses several times a week. And Ted on Your Side discovered there's a way to make them safer. Investigative reporter Chris Horn has more on the rolling risk on our rails. Yeah, Tom and Nicole, we looked at four derailments in the past 18 months. The railroads and tank car makers want to make the cars safer and know how to do it. It's up to federal regulators to take action. Yeah, sometimes she's out here playing and um, well, we talk about the train. Oh, you see that leaf? Christina Murphy yeah, spends a lot of time in her backyard with her daughter, Lily. <laughs> Several trains pass within 50 feet of their backyard every week. Yeah, it shakes the house. It really, yeah, you can feel it upstairs. It rattles the doors. What she didn't know until we told her. What's in some of those trains? You know, we talk about it, but uh, never thought about the danger. When you say crude oil, a lot of people think about the Beverly Hillbillies and the bubbling crude oil. It, it's not that kind of crude oil. It's Bakken crude going from North Dakota to Yorktown. A Bakken train derailed last year in Quebec, killing nearly 50 people. One derailed last April in Lynchburg. Only one car ruptured, but it caused this huge fire. Today, that same risk that existed on April 30th, over six months later, is right here along the James River today. And that's our concern, is that we need to ensure that this doesn't happen again. CSX hauls the Bakken crude on trains much longer than this one. At least three million gallons of oil on each train, as often as five times a week. Experts say Bakken crude is more flammable than other types. It's probably a lot closer to gasoline uh, as far as the flammability of it. Very highly volatile, low flash point, and it's going right through um, highly populated areas. Many of the cars that haul it, about 70,000, have outdated older designs. The Railway Supply Institute says there's really only two solutions, safety upgrades or removal from hazmat service. We cut open this double-walled coffee thermos to illustrate what can be done to make the tank car safer. Think of the inside as what the tank car is right now, where the oil is. One proposal would add the outside layer, a protective jacket. Other measures include guards on the top, on the ends, and underneath. Keep the oil inside and the car intact. My industry likes the certainty of a rulemaking and, and have, has urged the Department of Transportation to, to move quickly on, on issuing a final rule. The railroad industry supports to improve the tank car standards uh, to make sure that we're moving the safest cars that we possibly can. So what's the holdup? We contacted the federal agency in charge. Despite our repeated attempts, they wouldn't make someone available for an interview. Their email says the public comment period has closed and now they will evaluate nearly 4,000 comments. They are considering car safety upgrades. We asked when they could go beyond that and become mandatory. A spokesman says the target date is March 31st. Lynchburg contributed to the larger discussion nationally about how we enhance safety for these types of trains. Nothing like that ever even crossed my mind that it could be carrying hazardous, dangerous material, so it's good that you brought that to light. Well, you heard it about the new rule, March 31st, so it sounds like we'll be done with this by next spring, right? Not really. Only a limited number of shops are certified to do the safety upgrades. The industry says you can't pull all the old cars off the tracks at once because there aren't enough trucks to haul the oil. Estimates range from two to five years to make the older cars safer. We'll continue to follow up on behalf of Christina Murphy and the parents whose kids attend schools that are right next to the tracks. Meanwhile, they'll have to wait knowing what could happen. Chris Horn, 10 on your side.